cool and introspective, fiery and hot. Jazz has as many definitions as it does listeners and players. In Philadelphia, everyone agrees if you want to hear real jazz, go to Ortlieb Jazz House. For more than a decade, Ortlieb's has hosted the finest in jazz. The internationally famous and the local jazz legends can be heard there six nights a week. Aspiring players, jazz novices, seasoned veterans, jazz aficionados, and sometimes the just plain curious. Convene at the now chiseled in stone Tuesday night jams. But before leaving the jazz house, the mix of patrons have become one. They then go forth to spread the good news about the spiritually uplifting Tuesday night jam sessions at Old Ortlieb's. fact that the core of the players at this club are seasoned, experienced players and, and among the best players anywhere in the world, um, along with the fact that uh, a couple of the players happen to be teachers and uh, their students come in on a regular basis, there's, you know, there's a, there's a, a constant influx uh, that, that transcends all uh, age groups and uh, all uh, ethnic groups and, and, and people come here because the spirit of jazz is alive here. <laughs> computer geek. Sun at the time, like many corporations, was undergoing this this period of time where they were, you know, doing the downsizing and the contractions and the, so they were they were offered offering packages to people. Well I had been thinking about getting out of Sun for a little while. I got the package, um, left Sun, now this was in October of 86, and at that time I had met uh, my current wife Margaret, and you know, we were having a lot of discussions about what to do, and she, one of the things she was sort of encouraging me to do was like, hey, what do you want to do with your life? What are some of your dreams? Do what you wrote. What do you really want to do? I 
I think it's probably been a long dream of mine to run a to run a jazz club or run a club and you know feature jazz. And they asked me this real estate agency asked me if they could call me if something else came up and I said sure and they and they did they called me about this Ortlieb's tavern I've been there once and I thought to myself yeah that would be that could be a jazz club now, all anybody ever tried to do is talk me out of it but um, and many times Margaret and I think to ourselves, boy, we wish they would have talk, uh, talked us out of it, but we, we went ahead with it uh, and settled, you know, bought the place and settled uh, on the uh, Hat Settlement in September of 87, so that's when we started. Ort Liebs, for the past 15 years, has been the number one club for real jazz in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, it's been an opportunity for musicians, young and old, to hone their craft. An opportunity for listeners, for music lovers from all walks of life to come into a place and feel comfortable there. Uh, an opportunity for It's just an opportunity in general for the music to live, to survive. Ortlieb's is, is the spot in Philly where the musicians hang out. Unlike any of the other places, you can see anybody come through. Any, anyone, George Benson's been in here. I mean, uh, I've been in here, actors, Denzel Washington, a number of people, all different musicians. You know, there's guys down here tonight at the jam session from, uh, come down from New York, actually, just to play the jam session. A few guys have never been here before, and they're talking about they can't believe it. They can't believe this scene on a Tuesday night, the place is packed. You don't have to buy dinner, you don't have to buy a drink, you can get by sometimes, you know. We're just sitting there and listening to the music, man. You got Brucey Barnes coming up another living legend, man. Yeah. You never know who's gonna pop up. Who's, not, who's gonna pop up and play, man. Everybody know Ortlieb's, you know, it's definitely a slamming spot. The true performer, the true musician knows that or realizes that his uh, energy, his musical energy comes as a gift from the creator of all things. And he's trying to relate to the, to the listeners, to the vibe in the room as well as trying to offer up something that is, is uh, worthy to the creator in this endeavor.
Now, I don't go to church anymore. I mean, I came up going to church, but I say now that every time I get on the bandstand, it's like being in church because you're uh, praising the Creator. I am, anyway, and it's very um, spiritual endeavor. This is what God put me here to do. This is my purpose, is to spread music and spread love. It's nothing like, you know, seeing somebody smile or, or knowing that you really touch somebody by playing, you know, something, some music. You know, it's no greater gift in, in the world than that. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it in for, for anything else. deeply rooted in a, a kind of a uh, intersection or cusp of uh, s spiritual things that happen and a high, a very high order of craftman, craftsmanship, what I call craftsmanship, because I think, to be honest, there's, it's mostly craftsmanship, because, you know, you know, to, to, to attribute it to, well, I, I'm being, I'm being a little bit, uh, I, I probably being pessimistic there, there probably is spiritual, spiritual aspects to it that go on. You're connecting at some kind of level that none of us have any idea how we can connect that way. I inject my being into this thing. You know, I believe that's what music is about. It's, it's, it is a spiritual connection, you know, but um, we also got to be aware of the, the theory and education that's involved with it too. That, that that energy, man, is like it's a spiritual thing, you know. And I just want to just be up there with it. I just want to vibe with it, you know what I'm saying? I try to get everybody involved in what I'm doing. The audience is what when I'm playing my horn and it gets real intense, man. I'm playing. And, I feel as though I ain't doing nothing. Then I start hearing people in the audience say, yeah, blow it, do it. Go ahead, hit that note again, yeah. I say, oh boy, then I really go crazy then. The audience is what make you play like that. If I'm, I can play good, I'm thinking I'm playing good all night long. My finger's going like this, and I'm not really doing nothing. But I can play one note, ba ba da, ba ba da. And the audience say, yeah, I say, ba ba da. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I play one note and everybody be saying, yeah. And that, it's more than saying, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? 